Good morning. It's so good to greet all of you uh, this morning as we uh, begin another small step to returning to what we've known as normal. And that is our uh, contemporary service that we're holding every third Sunday of the month. And we have a few songs that we'd like to share with you today. There are four different ones. The choir has been singing some of them uh, for the past uh, few weeks. We'll sing another one today. Um, and so we'd like to use this time right now to give you a little insight and a little heads up on some of the songs and let some of these melodies ring through your head as they've been ringing through our heads and hearts for the last few weeks. So the first one we'd like to sing with you is Dust I Am. And this is going to be uh, the song of confession. Uh, we are under the theme this year, God is continuing to create in us. God is creating in us um, all the time. And so the idea about um, that we are dust and he's molding us and shaping us is part of our uh, theme again for this year. So we're going to go through the refrain in your um, pamphlets or up here, I think on the uh, screens, you will see that where it says refrain and congregation, dust I am, to dust I shall return, have mercy, O God. And the contemporary group will be singing uh, this for you and sing along. Yeah. 
Good morning. Good morning. Special welcome to guests and visitors. We're pleased that you're uh, worshiping uh, Christ here with us this morning. Uh, we, and we pray that the joy of Christ will fill you today. Um, all guests are invited to uh, pick up a pocket prayer shawl, shawl from the ushers when you leave this morning. Uh, and then please join us downstairs for coffee fellowship after the service. Uh, today, uh, KDAL broad, radio broadcast is sponsored in memory of Jean Olson's birthday, who would have been, whose birthday would have been on October 15th. Uh, uh, Mary Lou Olson and Pat Collins are sponsoring that. And then special birthday greetings go to Ruth Hansen, whose birthday is tomorrow, and uh, Lainey Husinga on Thursday this week. Uh, there will be a meeting Tuesday, October 26, for all parents and youth about the 2022 ELCA Youth Gathering in Minneapolis. That meeting's at 6.30. And there is no confirmation kids club, youth groups, or Sunday school next week uh, because it is the MEA break. And then we uh, pray for several families, or several families within our church family. Uh, the family of Stan Linney, whose uh, funeral was here yesterday. Uh, we also pray for uh, early sis on the passing of her sister-in-law, Jeanette Rindy. And uh, Earl Lundine and Steve and Val Henricks on the, of, on the passing of Molly Lundine. Uh, her service will be here this Thursday with uh, visitation and prayer service uh, Wednesday night. I am available for pastoral calls and visits. Uh, but we need your help if you would call uh, the church office or my cell um, so that I can come out to visit you. We need uh, your permissions to vis do hospital visits and to, to do, um, put your names in the prayer chain. Uh, the pastor relations uh, will be meeting sometime this month. The current members of that are Jackie Dominey, uh, Josh Walschleiger, and Marilyn Chinval. So please consider that an open invitation uh, to uh, make comments to them. And then in our community, uh, Our Redeemers Lutheran Church in Benson is having their 66th annual Norwegian Smorgasbord on Wednesday the 26th. So there is information on the bulletin board on that. Uh, is there anything I've missed? All right, please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace with those around you. Well, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us into everlasting hope, who guides us to springs of the water of life, who enlightens us with the spirit of wisdom. Amen. The spirit is coming to bless us all with a new song. Let our joy be complete. We will sing for joy in God. Explode in grace. For as the earth bursts with spring wildflowers, and as the garden cascades with blossoms, God brings righteousness into full bloom. For if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life emerges. Gifts for the good of all poured out on all. Love one another. You may be seated as we sing, A Dust As I Am.
God knows how we are made. God remembers that we are dust. Yet God is sheer mercy and grace, not easily angered, yet rich in love. God forgives your sins, every one. God redeems you and saves your life. God crowns you with love and mercy. God rekindles burned out lives with fresh hope. God restores dignity and respect to your life. Amen. Amen. Each morning and take a look around, I behold God's creation, each sight and every sound. I give thanks for the blessings the brand new day will bring, and my spirit rejoices, my heart begins to sing. Lord, let your light shine down on me. Lord, let your light shine down on me. Show me the way to serve you every day. Oh, Lord, let let your light shine down on me. When my troubles and burdens are more than I can bear, I am filled with assurance, for you are always there. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading, can be, the reading can be found on page two, 172 in the New Testament Bible. Using imagery from scripture and from, Jesus, from Jewish worship practices, Jesus is presented as the great high priest who was obedient to God's saving plan. Through his suffering and death, he has become the source of eternal salvation. A reading from Hebrews, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. 
he is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming the high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he, also, as he says also in another place, You are a high priest forever, according to the order of Mecheslik. In the day of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Mel Melchizedek, the Lord, the word of the Lord. Be well, I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. If you'd like to sit up here on the stairs. Well, good morning. Morning. Oh, I say it again. Good morning. morning. Thank you. So, do you have a special spot that you sit in in the car or the pickup? Yeah. Do you think it's more special than the other spots? No. Well, do you argue with your brother or sister about sitting there? Yes. You know, I used to do that too. Well, what about when you're having a snack? And it looks like someone else got a bigger piece or more than you. Do you argue about that too? No. You don't? <laughs> hmm. Well, in our Bible story today, some of Jesus' closest friends asked if they could sit in a special place next to Jesus. Do you think the other friends of Jesus were happy about that? No, they weren't. They argued about that. Well, sometimes we argue over things or places or are jealous of other people's because they, we think that they have more Jesus than we do. Or we think that Jesus loves them more. Jesus loves all of us. That's the big news. The good news is that there is more than enough Jesus to go around, and there's enough Jesus for everyone. God's love never runs out, and God's love is for everyone, and no one gets a bigger share of God's love. No one is more special in God's eyes. God loves each and every one of us equally. Isn't that good news? Yes, it is. All right, would you pray? Help me pray with me and repeat what I say. Dear God, thank you for loving us. All of us the same. Forgive us when we argue. Help us to love. Amen. All right, can you stand and we'll make the sign of the cross? Oop. Yeah, I can't forget that. God in my head, God in my heart, God on my left, and God on my right. All right, thank you. You can go back to your seats. Oh, thank you for coming. Uh, this morning, our special uh, music is by the choir, A Good Work. Yeah. 
Thank you, Claire. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this morning is found in St. Mark chapter 10. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him, that is Jesus, and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it had been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, for whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, may be seated. Well, grace and peace from Jesus, the servant of all, the Savior of all. Amen. Well, for those of you that have worked in the business world, what we heard from James and John asking Jesus today is not surprising. We really can't fault them for their bold question. They're only doing what every guidance counselor, employment agency, and self-help career guide tells us to do, that is to sell ourselves. Well, we all know you don't get ahead by simply showing up every day, doing your job, and keeping your nose to the grindstone. You have to be noticed. You have to stand out. You must put yourself out there if you want to succeed. If you don't ask, you won't receive. Well, James and John aimed for the sky wanting to be named vice president and secretary of state when Jesus gets elected president. Well, it's not about a bigger paycheck, a title, or status. Everyone wants to be recognized. Everyone wants to count for something. Everyone wants to have something to show for a lifetime of work. And not that there's anything wrong with pursuing advancement or title or status, but what is the motivation behind it? We're not able to discern our own motives. We uh, easily lie to ourselves. And I'm sure James and John were at, at least partly motivated by a desire to draw nearer to Jesus and share more deeply in his mission. But it seems pretty obvious that there was also strong, selfish ambition at play here. The disciples were, like us, at the same time, saints and sinners. Well, right before today's reading, Jesus tells the disciples for the third and last time what he was to face in Jerusalem. He was quite explicit, detailing what was to come. Jesus told them, see, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and they will hand him over to the Gentiles, 
They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him, and after three days he will rise again. So it's immediately after Jesus says this that the sons of thunder, brothers James and John, request the place of honor and power to sit at the right and left hand of Jesus. Did they not hear what Jesus said? What kinds of glory involves mocking, spitting, flogging, and killing? Well, they really didn't listen or understand what Jesus was saying. On that fateful day, there will be two people, one on the left and one on the right of Jesus, but they won't be seated. And it won't be James and John either. It will be the two thieves that are hanging on each of his side. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life a ransom for many. Well, Reverend Olson in his blog shared this parable. At the end of time, when the messianic banquet had been set, the saints could not help but notice that there was at Jesus' right hand at the table a woman gloriously dressed and bathed in light. Some thought it must be the Virgin Mary. Others thought she must be Mary of Magdala or perhaps Lydia of Philippi or some other great saint. Finally, one of the saints worked up the courage to ask, Lord, who is that at your right hand? The Lord answered, Ah, that is my Sophia. Jesus went on to explain, there was one day when I was so despondent from being so thoroughly misunderstood, so crushed under the weight of constant attacks, so weary of dealing day after day with stupid questions, pointless arguments, and overwhelmed by oceans of human suffering, that I was ready to give up. I felt as though I could not go on one more day. That is, when Sophie, or Sophia showed up with her sweet smelling perfume, pouring it over my fevered head, rubbing my scalp and massaging my tired feet. That delightful scent and the touch of those caring hands were just enough of what I needed right then to recapture my vision and zeal for God's kingdom. I declared that whenever the gospel was preached, her act of kindness would be remembered in her honor. And can you believe it? That blockhead evangelist forgot to record her name. Anyway, you're all here with me today because she was there for me then. End quote. Well, we don't know who will be at the places of honor at that great banquet. We can imagine it might be the 12 disciples, the prophets before them, or the great theologians after them, such as Augustine, Aquinas, John Calvin, Martin Luther, or Diedrich Bonhoeffer. It could be the great peach, tre, uh, preacher, Martin Luther King Jr., or the great servant, Mother Teresa. But maybe it might just be ordinary folks who offered a hug, a kind word, a helping hand, or a bottle of ointment at just the right time to change a life, a movement, or maybe even the course of history. Any act of kindness, mercy, and compassion has ripple effects unforeseen and unforeseeable because the right hand of God is everywhere making use of these moments to move us closer to the day when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. 
God's hand turns up in the most unexpected places and times. And the privilege of being there is not an honor to be achieved. It is like all of God's good gifts. It's a matter of sheer grace. Well, Martin Luther King Jr., preaching on people's need for recognition, called it this desire for attention, this desire for distinction in the basic impulse, the basic drive of human life, this drum major instinct. So he went on to say what he wanted said at his funeral. If any of you are around when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. And every now and then I wonder what I want them to say. Well, tell them not to mention that I have the Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or 400 other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that day that I tried to be right on the war question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. And I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to clothe those who are naked. And I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say, unquote. At another time, he stated, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Well, in Jesus' alternate kingdom, as David Lowe states, power is demonstrated through service. Greatness is shown in vulnerability and achievement comes through compassion. Anyone can do this. Anyone can do an act of kindness. Anyone can put others first. Anyone can offer compassion to those around them. No matter how you serve another, even though you can't do it perfectly, and even when you fail miserably, there's enough grace for that. Well, three times Jesus tells the disciples what will happen in Jerusalem. Three times they misunderstand, and Jesus goes there anyway. He keeps marching, he keeps healing, he keeps loving, he keeps serving, he keeps giving himself as a ransom to save us from ourselves. And he will continue to do just that until all of us are saved, overwhelmed, drowned, crucified, and raised again by God's unending, all-encompassing love. Well, thanks be to God that Jesus came and still comes to us today. Amen. Our song is the handiwork of God. Just a couple of words about this song start to sing. Uh, the handiwork of God is based on the image of a quilt that is stitched together um, by loving hands. And on a literal level, we just want to shout out to our day of love people that have put so much time and effort into making beautiful quilts that 
um, it, that give warmth and love and beauty and color to our lives. Um, but on a, a, a figurative level, too, we're talking about God in creation, creating beautiful um, pieces of art and warmth from broken, sometimes broken pieces of our lives or the, the worn out parts of our lives and putting them together and stitching them into something new.
Please stand as you are able as we affirm our faith in the words uh, printed in your bulletin. We believe in God above us, creator of all things, sustainer of all life. We believe in Christ beside us, companion and friend, redeemer of all the broken pieces of our universe. We believe in spirit deep within us, advocate and guide, who lives with us eternally. We believe in God's resurrection created world, where all things are fixed and all creation fits together in vibrant harmonies. We believe in God above, beside, within. God yesterday, today, and forever. The three in one, the one in three. We believe in God. You may be seated for the prayers. Set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Uh, each petition ends in, hear us, O God, and your response is, your mercy is great. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provided for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfall, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O oh God. Suffering one for all who bring or all who work toward peace and all who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O oh God. <laughs> Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any other illness. Today we especially lift up the family of Molly Lundeen, the family of Stanley Linney, the family of Jeanette Rindy. We ask for healing and comfort for Mary, Ken, Bev, Brent, Nancy, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Jim, Marlis, Erlise, Aaron, Sharon, Brandy, Mick, Henry, Paul, Larry, Natalie, Riona, Zane, Linda, Ralph, Janice, Dorothy, and Terry. Our Fairway View neighborhood friends, Ron, Howard, Eleanor, and Cheryl. Our military who are deployed to areas of conflict, especially Sergio and Mallory. We pray that all may be healed of whatever they need. Hear us, O oh God. Sustaining one for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O oh God. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. At this time, we ask the ushers to bring our offerings forward. 
Uh, we live out our testimony of God's faithfulness through our giving of ourselves, our time, our talents, wills, and treasures. All right, let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offerings of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the blessing. May God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. So people of God, go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Okay, we will. All right, you will be seated for the last song.
each morning and take a look around. I see whole God's creation, each light and every soul. I give thanks for the blessings the brand new day will bring. And my spirit rejoices, my heart begins to sing. Lord, let your light shine down on me. Lord, let your light shine down on me.